Listen, it's not funny. It's really not funny, guys. They try to kill me. So basically, I was like, okay, look, what can you guys do to me? Because I am dying. Fix me now. So this is going to be my labor story. And everything could have been just grand if I didn't get Dollar Tree brand nurses. Happy Saturday. Um, I'm Sarah, if you're new to my channel. And I just do like some kind of random videos on this channel. So basically, I was due on June 13th. And I tried like everything to induce my labor because I was so tired. So I started like doing random labor induction exercises, drinking primrose oil, eating two big pineapples a day. I went into pre-labor on her due date. June 13th, I kind of had like contractions every 30 to 45 minutes, mostly apart. And they weren't that intense. And the 14th. I, start, I was still like having contractions all the time, but it was like more like 10 to 20 minutes apart. And both of those days, I really didn't get any sleep and I didn't really eat anything either because I was just so like uncomfortable and I was just like trying to time my contractions to see when I had to go to the hospital. On the 15th, um, when I woke up, I didn't really sleep, honestly. I went to bed and then I was getting like intense contractions every 10 minutes, so I couldn't even sleep. And I was just on my birthing ball doing my little exercises, playing my worship music, and trying to let my husband sleep because he knew like if I'm about to go into labor, then we're just both gonna be super tired and whatever. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go to the hospital because it's been like two full days and I'm just tired and like, I just want them to at least check if I've dilated or something. Like I just, I'm just so over it at this point. My contractions were much stronger. They were like seven to 12 minutes apart mostly, I would say. And um, I just wanted to go make sure everything's fine. So we went to the doctor, the hospital, and they were like, okay, hi, like you're two centimeters and blah, blah. And they were like, we're gonna let you walk around for like 20 whatever minutes and we'll check you again and see if you're making any progress or not. Like after I started doing the walking in the hospital, that's when I felt like everything kind of started going, you know? invited us back in and then he was like okay well it doesn't really seem like you've progressed much first of all like giving me 20 minutes to walk isn't much time like you should at least give me like an hour or something i was really upset because they're like you should go home because it might be days to be delivered like come back see you later this week and i was like get out of here like don't talk to me like get your foolishness out of here basically after that i just started crying a lot like i was just so tired and so i didn't i like didn't eat and i didn't sleep for really like two days at this point and like even before that like you're so uncomfortable third trimester that like you don't even get decent sleep honestly so then like me and jerome we just like went to wegmans and whatever we were gonna go try to pick up some random snacks and Calm down. I was literally just like crying the whole time we were at Wegmans and I was having contractions like walking around the store and then I'd be like stop and like grab him. It was really weird shopping at Wegmans while you're in labor. It was really fun. Amazing. So basically this guy told me like don't come back unless like your water breaks or your contractions are like two minutes apart and like you literally feel like you were dying or whatever pretty much. That's what he pretty much said to me or unless like there's some crazy bleeding or something too. That's what he said. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna be like strong. I'm gonna try to go home and chill. I'm gonna try to like go sit in the bathtub. That did nothing for me, so thanks. I was just literally uncomfortable trying to sit in your bathtub with that huge stomach. Like you literally are failing. That's what it feels like. You're failing at everything in life, okay? And the water isn't even like high enough to cover your belly at that point. So you're just like sitting there like half feeling them and have not it was stupid so i didn't like it at that point my mom and my sister were with me because i kind of just wanted my mom here because she had 10 kids so i was like whatever she can come watch me it's gonna be great and my sister obviously came too my sister was kind of like freaking out literally three hours later um it was really bad like my mom was like oh my goodness like you need to go to the hospital like i see you like she tried to make me like lay down and relax I was literally just like crying like it was really bad like I couldn't eat anything I couldn't drink anything like I was just like sitting there like <sighs> so my mom drove me to the hospital and of course coronavirus is amazing so you're only allowed to have one person with you and in the hospital pretty much at all times 
So my sister came with me at first. My sister walked me up like immediately because I was like, let's go. Like, I can't handle it. Like, I need to go in there now. So I went there to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And the lady in the entrance was like, oh, like, you're back. You think it's for real this time? Like, making me some attitude face. Please, lady. Have you ever been in labor? Because I don't want to even look at your face. Yes, I was in labor, actually, but. This was at um, Oshai Children's Hospital, okay? So I get to third floor and I'm like, hey, like I'm back, obviously, crying and contracting and everything. And these, I don't know where they get their nurses from or where these people think they are. They think they're like in the middle of vacation because these nurses work on third floor and it has a big sign that says labor and delivery, right? So I walk up there, like, I don't walk up there. They wheeled me up there, sorry, couldn't walk because some stuff was going on so um this lady is like looking at me like can you like go give us a urine sample like okay first of all like what's that gonna help anybody with it's not you guys want me to go to see pee in a cup right now when i'm feeling like this okay plus i was just annoyed because i already came in that morning and i already did all that trash and they're like making me redo it now so i was annoyed yeah and then i was like getting contraction and i was like breathing and like half crying and my sister was like okay breathe like breathe this lady's like what's going on is she fine like what what's happening lady have you never seen a woman in labor because they don't sit there and smile and talk about rainbows so yeah i went and i laid in the little bed so um the nurses that were there in the morning were there again and they saw me come in and they're like oh my like she's back like let's see what's going on of course like ooh. okay i like these nurses these two nurses were amazing don't know your names but you guys are angels so god bless they were like okay like we can tell like girl you're suffering and you're not like some little weak child like we see like you're not just pretending like hey, i'm having a contraction like please give me a minute like i was like literally breathing and you know so they were like you know what we're gonna just shove in your iv real quick and then pretty much like force them to admit you because if i already do your iv and everything like technically you're like admitted because what are they going to do? Pull the IV out and tell you to go home? I don't think so. So this doctor came back in and he was checking me again. I was at 3.5 centimeters, right? Then he's like, okay, look. like fine, admit her, whatever. And like, I guess he was trying to be a butt cheek because he was jealous. That's what happened. Then I was laying there, of course, having the time of my life. And um, I was like, can I get up your girl? Like, hello. I've been in labor for three days. Like, I need a break from these stupid contractions because I can't handle it. Like, I don't care. Like, get the nurse in here with that big long needle and put it in my back because I can't handle this. I need a break. They're like, um, your doctor, he said that we can't give you epidural until we see that you're, like, progressing. Because we think if we give it to you, pretty much you're just going to sag around and your contractions are going to stop. And it's going to take us forever. And we obviously don't want you laying in our hospital for more than one day. So, we'd rather see you suffer and almost die. That was their plan. It was amazing. I know. They had it all planned out, ran on their little calendar, make Sarah almost die today. These grannies. First of all, let me tell you that the doctor, the doctor who's my doctor, first of all, I asked for him to not be my doctor anymore because I see this other lady now and she is like way better than him and she doesn't tell me I'm fat every time I come to the appointment. And this guy's seen me one time while I was pregnant. And you know what he told me? You gained weight. Honey, I'm carrying a whole child in here, plus a ginormous uterus and a whole ball of water. Am I gonna seriously lose weight? This man, mm. Mm -mm. he wouldn't let me get epidural. So I was sitting there dying and screaming, Lord have mercy on the whole hospital. And if you think I'm joking, you could call up the nurses and ask them. Be like, was she really crying and screaming, Lord have mercy on the whole entire hospital? And I was like, oh yeah, that lady, of course she was all day long. And night long because I delivered at 11.57 PM, even though I should have had the baby at 10. Thanks. No, I was just crying really bad because first of all, I wanted Jerome. And and Jerome still didn't get to the hospital yet because like I said, my parents, my mom and my sister drove me. They wouldn't even let my mom upstairs and it was mental, like that's what it was. So my sister just sitting there kind of like, okay, let's say your prayers because I don't know what's happening and she looks like she is dying. So basically I was like, okay, look, what can you guys do to me? Because I am dying, fix me now. So these people, they gave me, I don't know what it's called. If you told me the name of it, I would know, but I don't remember because I was busy crying. 
So they like put something in my IV and it like makes you super sleepy and you're just like, whoa. And then they like ask you to sign some papers while you're in mental mode and you feel like you're drunk. And you're like, ooh, not that I've ever been drunk. The Lord knows. Thank you. I'm just saying. That's like how I can describe it. It's like if they ask you to take the drunk test and walk in a straight line, you would fail. That's like what it does to you. And you're just like, and they ask you to sign some papers and you're just like trying to sign it and it's like looking really crazy. And this um great painkiller only does something for like an hour and then it like just fades away but they don't let you get it for more than once in two hours so boom i'm laying here relaxing and it's not even like it makes all your pain go away it just like softens the contractions pretty much it makes you like it makes you so like dizzy and stuff in your head that it like your body can't even focus on the pain i guess because it makes you literally feel like you've gone mental so um that was actually the best part of my whole entire labor was when I felt drunk. And then I just started feeling them like getting stronger and stronger. Like I had pain relief for the shortest amount of time. Like imagine three days of labor and you only get like an hour of relieved pain. Like that's all I had. <sighs> then they come to check me and I was two hours, I was two hours into being admitted and I was at six centimeters already. Like literally went from three to like six in two hours, which is crazy kind of for um, a first he was like whoa like okay whoa let me call the doctor and tell him like what's going on and ask him if you could get your epidural i was like oh amazing now you decide to do your job please do thanks bye get back to me when you can fix me and this guy was great this was the only good like doctor pretty much in the entire hospital at my day of delivery of course i get stuck with all the butt cheeks on the night shift so <sighs> So he's like, okay, the doctor said you can get epidural. Congratulations, like amazing. And I'm like, oh my goodness, wow, the Lord is blessing me. I'm gonna feel amazing. I'm gonna be alive. I'm not gonna die today. Life is great. Okay, listen. These people are like, okay, well, like, first we're gonna send the anesthesiologist to go to this do a C-section, like for some other random grandma, because you're just not as important. So if you could just lay here and slowly keep dying, we'll be right. <laughs> We'll be right back to save you right before you die. Okay, great, God bless. So they leave. So I'm feeling these intense contractions. Like I'm at six centimeters. Like this is like active labor. Like I'm like, ooh. Yeah, the anesthesiologist was busy if doing a C-section for guess how long? No, not 20 minutes. No, not 30 minutes. Two hours. Yeah, I laid there for two hours got no pain medication because I was like, can I get more of that like dizzy thing? And they're like, no, because you're about to get epidural. Just like sit there, they're coming. They're coming. Like this nurse, first of all, this nurse, I don't know what your name is, but it's probably Dollar Tree because you are a piece of crumb, a crumb on the floor. I'm sorry. Like I cannot explain to you how crusty you are. You're like the crustiest bread there's ever been. <laughs> sitting around for three weeks i'm so mad this lady she was the most annoying grandma in the entire universe guys i was having contractions and like trying to like scream them out a little bit and whatever calm down cope with it she was like you're fine like can you calm down just breathe like shh, like you're fine really because you want to lay down here and have this child i didn't think so because you would be dead by now if you did if I did to you what you did to me. Thank you. So this lady, she would get mad at me for moving. Like, you know, like when you're having contractions, you want to like change positions to try to ease the pain because it's a little more comfy in the next position than the one you're in currently. And she would get mad at me because I was making her do her job. She was like, it would be really convenient if you like stop moving because every time you move, I have to keep moving the baby monitor and like, it's just really inconvenient for me. Well, I'm sorry. It's kind of inconvenient to be in labor as well. And she was like trying to force me to get up and go to the bathroom while I was in the middle of labor. And she's like, I make sure you like don't go number two because your baby might come out. And like, I don't know. I can't. She was, she was rough. She was a lot to handle. Basically, let's get to the best part, guys. The best part is right here. So finally, they're like, ooh, their epidural is coming. The Lord is blessing you today. Okay. Salvation is here. So, um, I was like, okay, hello, it's been two hours since you checked me, and last time you checked me, like, I dilated, like, super fast, so maybe you should, like, check me again. So I asked this nurse, I was like, hello, 
you think we should check me before we do the epidural because I know that if you're too far there's no point of doing it because it's not even gonna work and it's just a fail and they don't do it because some people have a brain so it's like um, you're fine we'll just check you after these people gave me epidural at nine and a half centimeters and they did it wrong okay thanks I'm really <laughs> And I'm just so over it. <laughs> Listen, it's been almost two weeks now, so I'm just laughing, but you should have seen me. After labor, I was just talking straight trash about these nurses for like the first week. I couldn't. My mom was mad at them. My sister was mad at them. Like everyone was mad at them. Okay, it was amazing. So they gave me epidural, nine and a half centimeters. And the one doctor came and checked me after and he was like oh my goodness i think you're at a 10. And god bless like hello and then he called in the other doctor the one who calls me fat all the day long so he's like um i think that i might be feeling some cervix so we're gonna make you lay here and die first of all i was mad because i kept clicking my stupid epidural button and guess what was happening nothing i was feeling every single contraction and you know what they did they put it in somehow where the only <laughs> only thing that got numb was my right thigh like when i like and it was only after i gave birth i like started feeling like, why is my leg like i can't feel it but like this one was fine and i felt every single contraction i felt the baby come i felt everything it was amazing i'm so thankful <laughs> it was great yeah when they were literally doing that for girl though i felt them like do something weird and i was like okay it scared me because they're like okay like we're gonna like do this soon we're about to like put it in your back like didn't even warn me and then like shoving this huge needle and i was like mm, okay <laughs> so i like kind of jumped right and then they like never fixed it after i like jumped so i'm pretty sure like went into some random crevice <laughs> and god bless i had a numb leg it was really helpful during the labor it was really amazing because I felt almost no pain in my legs. So. so this nurse never got me checked before. So I was really mad at her because it was her fault. Because every single time I kept asking her stuff, she would always just like give me some mental answer because she's lazy. And she'd just be like, mm, well, they're going to come when you're done. And I'll be like, okay, well, how long is that? Mm, it, didn't, it depends on the C-section. And then like, she would pretty much just say some random stupidity to me. And she should get fired. If I knew her name, I'd let you know. But right now her name is Ms. Buckram then guess what hallelujah god bless i was like oh time to push god is good i can be out of pain i was obviously dreaming because i haven't slept in three days these people they tell me you can't push you're gonna lay on your side you're gonna close your legs and you can't let the baby come out you know how long they made me lay like that for two hours and i was literally screaming and crying and dying and drum was texting my mom because he was literally freaking out and he didn't know what to do and then the doctors this little cute nurse of course we've been talking about her all this time she's like telling the other little nurse coming in there like her little boyfriend nurse or whatever oh like the cord is getting compressed or whatever but like she was like whispering it so we wouldn't hear it and of course drum goes what was that they didn't want us to know that our baby is dying and they were really excited about it. So it was really sweet of them. I didn't know what to do because my mom was like, oh my goodness, like we'll literally get the doctor in there and tell them you're having the baby. And we we're like, oh my goodness, we don't know what to do because we keep asking this grandma nurse and she keeps saying that they're going to come in 45 minutes and check you then and then we'll see. And also my water never broke. So when this guy said go home and come back when your water breaks, I would have had the baby at home. Sweet pea. He broke my water at 10 centimeters. Yeah, it was great and then I had her in 10 minutes when they finally let me push because I started screaming that I'm dying and I don't care whatever happens to myself and my cervix because I said I don't care get in here um getting this baby out now because you guys are trying to kill me I literally told them I'm dying get in here I was so mad and that one nice doctor guy I told you guys about yeah he was the only one who was like okay I'm getting the doctor I'm coming back and hallelujah yeah and then he delivered the baby and he did really great and um, I had her in literally 10 minutes as soon as they let me push because I want to push so bad. And let me just tell you guys, 
Everyone's always scared about the pushing part, but guess what? The contractions before the pushing were approximately 100 times worse than actually pushing. Okay, because it's like your body's trying to do something and you're not letting it. And let me tell you that like after um, labor, that's like the worst thing I've ever had. Like my coochie is fine, okay? It's literally fine. It has given me no problems. I had like pain for one day and then God is blessing and it's fine. But guess what? Guess what hurts? My cervix. And it's hurting me and it's always like... And it's not like those little, oh, little cute contractions you get after labor. Oh, yeah, I'm breastfeeding, getting contractions, and it's not bad. It's literally like if I laugh, my cervix and my uterus and everything is hurting. Okay, because Rome showed me this funny little TikTok the other day, and I laughed. I had pain for like two days because of, I laughed that hard. Okay, so I'm really thankful that the nurses almost killed me, but I survived, so God bless you. And then they all want to come back. Oh my goodness, she's so cute. Oh my. Touch my baby one more time. Oh yeah, and then of course they take me up to the mommy floor. Ooh, yay. <laughs> get well soon, right? Get well soon floor where you get to sit and relax and enjoy baby and be happy. Oh, really? Because I wasn't. <sighs> Guys, I slept 0% of the time I was at the hospital. You know why? Because I was so scared. First of all, this lady nurse, this is still the same nurse where she like transported us upstairs. She started like fixing my IV and I'm really scared. I'm really scared guys. IV and stuff like that is the most scary thing to me because the doctors can never find my veins because I have little fine thin veins, okay? So they have to poke me like four, seven, four to seven times and get three different nurses in here and try and try again because they can never get the right vein and it's such a fail. So I'm so scared because last time they took blood out of my thumb it was an amazing experience. I was crying. This lady starts like moving my IV around and like trying to, I'm just going to retape it real quick. Like you shouldn't feel anything. Just lay there and relax. She starts like jabbing it around in my vein and I like can't breathe because I'm so scared. Like I just gave birth already. So I'm like in trauma. I was literally shaking for the next like hour or two while they were like doing the placenta and everything. I was just shaking. That's all I could do. I couldn't even like, I was like this, like that's it. Okay. Cause I was in so much trauma because they tried to kill me. I was like, okay, like, can you calm down with your IV over there, lady? Because she's like, mm, doing her little foolish, who knows what tricks, okay? I don't want to see them. And she's, you know what this lady says to me? You're fine. You just gave birth. And instead of being like, oh, sorry that I'm making you super uncomfortable right now. Like, it'll be right. I'll be finished in like one minute. Hold on, girl. Like, you got this. No, she said, be pretty much, she said, shut up. You just gave birth. So you can be quiet because you're fine. She was mad. She was jealous because my baby was cute. And she was jealous that she didn't kill me. Okay. So she was mad and she was trying to scare me. And finally this girl goes home. And I was like, the Lord is blessing me. Everything's going to be okay. Listen, guys. It was literally just these two nurses and that one doctor that I don't like. But, of course, he was on call. So. So it was just those three people who pretty much ruined everything. Everybody else was literally fine. Like all the other nurses I had over all that time, they were all fine. They were all great. They gave me no problems. It's just these two people. So this next lady, she comes in. Hey, oh my goodness. Hi, my angel. And tries to be all cute and exciting and pretending she's such a sweet pea. Guess what? Guess what this lady did? Let me tell you. Just sit back. Keep eating your popcorn. So, um... Of course, I'm just exhausted from giving birth. I cried so much for literally like two days. So I was like, I can't basically like after everything was done, then they wanted to like do her little prick the baby's foot and make it bleed. And I know the baby screams super loud. So I was like, okay, can you like please take her out while you like prick her? I'm scared. Like I'm going to cry again and I need to stop crying because I've been through way too much and I still have not slept in four days. So God bless you. Please take my baby, give her the prick, bring her back. Thanks. Guess what? This lady comes back and she proudly states to me that she fed my baby formula without asking me. She came back and she's like, Hallelujah, gave your baby formula and here you go. Here's the baby back. Hope she survives. That's what she did. Okay. And I cried the entire night because I'm literally sitting up all night long, pumping and pumping so that I can produce enough. Guess what she does pretty much is like, and she was such a butt crumb, guys. I literally started 
crying in front of her because I was trying to like wait till she leaves the room so I could just go get my tissues and whatever just so she doesn't have to see me like whatever but I got so mad at this point because she brings she like came back and she was pretty much like hey so I can like teach your husband how to like feed your baby um the battle of formula because obviously you're like not feeding her like well enough like I was not producing anything because she's hungry obviously clearly and you should start seeking help pretty much and start shoving formula down your baby's throat because um you're a fail so I started crying really bad because she was like pretty much your option right now is either start feeding her again or we're giving her formula like it was not even like okay maybe you should rest then I'll come back like or anything she's like no either start feeding now or we're giving her formula so I was really excited about it because of course I loved how they were treating me and I was just really really excited about it so I just cried all night that's all I did and then the next night I cried again because I was just over everything and I was so tired, I didn't sleep in four days. Mm -hmm. And they were just, I was just, I don't know what to do with myself, guys. That's all I have to say to you. Is because, honestly, I was like never worried for labor. And I was like, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be jolly and juicy and perfect. But it's just like every single thing that they could make go wrong went wrong. And they were just so... I don't know just some of the stuff was so rude like how how could you take my baby and give a formula and not ask me you know what I mean like I don't know I thought it was really disgusting and I was really 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 upset okay that's all I have to say I was just crying all the time because I'm the kind of person I don't even like say anything I just cry like I'll pretend I'm fine in front of you and then I'll go home and I'll get my tissues get, get in my bed and cry so that's what I do so yeah that's my story guys I hope you enjoyed it I'm here, I'm alive, and I survived, and actually I'm feeling way better. Like today and yesterday, I'm feeling so much better. That's it. That's the end of the story. And now I have a baby, and she's cute. Okay? But have a really good Saturday and a great week. And let me know what you guys think about my labor experience. And if yours was better or worse, let me know. And... If you guys ever go to that hospital, make sure you boss them around and tell them what to do because they obviously don't know how to do their job. They don't even know what a lady who in la who's in labor looks like. So they really just need help. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And if anybody ever gets the nurse that I got, please tell her that she is a buck crumb. And make sure you keep moving. So she has to keep moving the baby monitor so she gets mad. Okay. God bless. Let's go see the baby.